So the 2022 NFL Combine is in the books, and we're going to talk about some of the players that raised their stock the most and some others that may be disappointed. And first and foremost, before I go in position by position, we have to talk exclusively about the Georgia defense, and we'll start with the defensive line in Devontae Wyatt. Devontae Wyatt was a little bit overshadowed by teammate Jordan Davis and even Trayvon Walker to an extent, but he tested unbelievably. If you're not familiar with relative athletic score, it's uh basically a compiled list of athletic testing done by kent lee platt at math bomb on twitter but highly recommend following him that's where a lot of these ras scores will come from we're gonna look at some other things as well but Devonte wyatt was really really good to be over 300 pounds you can see in the 99th percentile for 40 yard dash 98th percentile for the 20 yard split and even still very explosive through 10 yards, which is more important for these defensive and offensive linemen as well. Broad jump was unbelievable too, over 903. Very, very, very good. Devontae Wyatt tested unbelievably well, but his teammate Jordan Davis was even better. The second highest RAS score of all time, just behind Calvin Johnson, Jordan Davis exceeded expectations by a mile. And we knew he was a good athlete. We knew he was great for his size but he's one of the tallest defensive tackles. 99th percentile, that's what that 9.92 is. 99th percentile for height. 97th percentile for weight. So it, it's a, this is the very top of the tallest and heaviest defensive tackles we've ever seen, but his broad jump was nearly at the record for the position. Vertical over 30 inches was crazy. And then the 40 yard dash, sub 4.8, unbelievable. Again, 99th percentile. You can get a big dude like that, and he even accelerated once he got farther down the line. So he was absolutely flying. He looked good in the drills, too. He was just on another level. Jordan Davis was incredible. And then teammate Trayvon Walker was right in that same vein as someone who really, really boosted his stock. We knew he was a good athlete. We didn't just know how crazy he would be. And then when you saw not only the testing here which is incredible it was the height it was the length his arms his hands let's go ahead and check that out in depth hands at nearly 11 inches from thumb to pinky insane very very big and then the arms 35 and one half i think that made his wingspan over 84 inches i want to say something absolutely insane those arms are incredibly long and why that why is that so important well as a pass rusher on the edge and he didn't get too many one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the edge if you watched him at georgia guys were constantly rotated in and out and roles were changed and walker was the most versatile piece of their defenses you know in terms of what his job was on a down-to-down -down basis the arms are so important for making first contact and in those one-on-ones Guy who makes first contact can win a lot, especially when you're as big and as powerful as Trayvon Walker. A 9.99 RAS is unbelievable. The 40, nearly 4.5 flat. The explosion was crazy. 1.62 is up near the top of the league in terms of the 10-yard split. Very, very agile as well. A three cone at 6.89 is insane. 97th percentile tested very very well and someone that will probably go in the top 15 of the draft but the linebackers didn't disappoint either now quay walker's vert wasn't exactly as high as you thought it may have been but for his size which is big nearly 6'4 over 240 pounds the 40 again near 4'5 flat and that should show you doing this at 240 quay walker's a great athlete but trayvon walker doing that a little bit faster at 270 pounds six foot five is insane but very very good times for quay walker who is already considered one of the top linebackers in the draft and his teammate channing tyndall tested even better 447 40 very very explosive with the 10 and 20 yard split really really good the vertical was in the 100th percentile 42 inches unbelievable vertical jump and channing tyndall is someone that could only get better as he goes into the league wasn't really a starter at Georgia with Quay Walker there and with N'Kobe Dean, of course, who is not on this list as he did not participate in the combine drills. But the interviews went really well for him. So he's someone whose stock is trending up as well. And then we got to talk about Darian Kendrick. Didn't participate in the 40 or anything like that. However, Darian Kendrick did look really, really good in the drills. And I think that uh, is pretty big for him. He was someone that was kicked off of the Clemson football team 
found a spot at Georgia. And I think he's going to be a pretty good player. I think if teams can get past the history with him and, you know, get him into a, a good culture, you have a decent prospect here in Darian Kendrick. Thought he looked good in the drills, so wanted to give him a little bit of shout out. And then Lewis Seen is the last defensive player. You know, he's getting talked about like a potential first round guy now. Teams love the mental makeup, and he's also got the size. A little bit underweight. You know, he's about 200 pounds. It isn't anything crazy. It's a little bit under average for what you'd see from uh, most safeties. But 6'2", can absolutely fly around the field. And the weight, I don't really view as a problem. Uh, he plays really, really fast and strong. He's kind of known as a big hitter. Ask Kyle Pitts about that. Lewis Seen delivered a monster shot on Kyle Pitts. Uh, it, Seen may have took the worst of it. I think he was concussed and out of the game. Uh, may have been ejected for targeting either way. But this guy plays really, really fast. And that 4-3-7-40 is no joke. Absolutely flying around the field. Amazing broad jump as well. Lewis Seen definitely could get some hype to go in the first round now. And George Pickens is the last Georgia player we'll look at. And I'm sorry that this video is all Georgia so far, but we got to talk about these guys, man. George Pickens going out there, we knew he was going to be big. Over 6'3", about 200 pounds. And keep in mind, this is a guy still recovering from an ACL tear. Goes out and runs sub 4'5 in the 40, 4'4'7". We know the speed's going to be there. His route pacing's great. He can go up and track the football. George Pickens is one of the best receivers in this class and I think has solidified that with testing really, really well. Vert wasn't anything crazy, but he's already got some really good size to him at over 6'3". Broad was good. I think this was just a bad day for him in the vertical, but the rest was really, really good. George Pickens is definitely someone to keep an eye on. Don't know if he goes first round, but this is someone that probably does not escape the third in any scenario. And now that we're past the George guys, we'll talk about the quarterback, starting off with Malik Willis. He didn't run or anything, which who cares, right? People are asking me, why didn't he run? It would have been fun. It would have been fun, but we know he's fast. We know he's a good athlete. We wanted to see him throw the football. We wanted to hear how the interviews went. We wanted to hear about, you know, his football acumen and all these different things. It's so important for the quarterback position. We want to know, like, Sam Howell, a number of these quarterbacks, Kenny Pickett. How good are they upstairs? Because that's a big part of playing quarterback. And Malik Willis seems to pass all the tests. We know he's a great athlete. Showed off the arm at the Combine interviewed really really well from everything that i've heard and everything that you know has been said so malik willis i would say stock up desmond ritter is also someone that's got to be stock up it's a close quarterback class and guys are trying to do everything they can to differentiate themselves from one another and desmond ritter going out and testing like one of the most athletic quarterbacks we've seen in the draft in a long time is pretty crazy sub four five forty very very explosive that's a one five nine ten yard split that would be elite for an edge rusher. That's what Kayvon Thibodeau came out and did. His vertical, his broad jump, very, very good as well. And Desmond Ritter, when you watch him on tape, the accuracy is the big concern, but he does things really smart in the field, getting guys aligned, recognizing coverages pre-snap. Ritter's definitely already past that mental part of the game, and then going out and being super athletic, I think definitely boosts his stock as well. Didn't do much on the field, you know, no running, nothing like that, but... What Sam Howell did do, apparently, is interview very, very well. And again, when the quarterback class is so close and that's such a highly valuable position, maybe a guy who interviews really, really well that you think can be the leader of a team will go higher than you think. Sam Howell apparently interviewed really well. And I can't talk about everyone or else this video would be too long, but I did want to highlight Cole Kelly from Southeastern Louisiana. He was someone that was recruited to play football at Arkansas, already someone that is a known talent, had to go to southeastern Louisiana. He's 6'7". He was listed at 260, but at the combine was under 250. But he's a big, big dude with a big arm. He was letting some bombs fly. And it, as a developmental quarterback, someone that you can maybe snag early on day three, Cole Kelly's at least someone to look out for. Was impressed by Brown quarterback EJ Perry as well. For the first loser of the video, Carson Strong. You know, he didn't do anything athletically. And that was already a big question mark with him. Haven't heard about how any of the medical testing went, but he has some medical red flags, especially with the knee. But Strong just didn't look too great throwing the football. It didn't really look all that good at the senior bowl either. So Carson Strong has some pretty good tape despite not having a lot of mobility, but as someone in the off season that really hasn't been that impressive. You hope that he would kind of stand out from the other quarterbacks, especially throwing the deep ball with the type of arm that he has. But 
wasn't really too good. Four winners at running back, we'll start off with Brees Hall. I don't think anyone expected him to run quite this fast. Brees Hall, really, really good running back prospect, touchdown machine, but for him to go out and run sub 4-4 is frankly unbelievable at 4-3-9. Very, very good time for him. Looked explosive, looked good through the drills. 40 inch vertical with a broad jump in the 93rd percentile. Brees Hall really showed out, as did Kenneth Walker, another one of these guys that you really didn't expect to test quite this well. He's a little bit undersized in terms of height, but the weight's fine at 211. That's really not much of a concern to me. The big thing with Kenneth Walker was, does this guy have the breakaway speed? Because he is quick, he's shifty, he's powerful, and then for him to go out and run 4-3-8, very explosive 20-yard split, 10-yard split, really, really good stuff. Kenneth Walker, stock definitely up. It's going to be a battle for running back one. Definitely have to show love to Pierre Strong as well, South Dakota State running back that looked very very athletic maybe the most athletic running back there ran 437 looked very very strong uh, and very very fast not carrying the most weight Rashad White someone that was really impressive as well love watching him at Arizona State very very shifty powerful at times as well explosive testing very very fast and then Zamir White was in the same percentile Vert wasn't so great but the broad shows the explosiveness fast as well at 44 flat Maybe Zamir White, who I thought was probably just going to be a running back by committee guy. Maybe this is a guy that could end up being a starting running back in the league. The first stock down running back is Isaiah Spiller from Texas A&M. Man, he didn't end up running the 40, doing any of the agility testing. But to start out with a vertical in the 14th percentile and a broad jump, not much better. Not looking great for Isaiah Spiller. He could have been in that conversation for RB1. How much does this hurt him? It definitely doesn't help him. Tape's still good. Hands are still good. But this was a bad start to his combine. And they just stopped doing anything. And it was a horrible day for Kyron Williams. He was already going to be an undersized guy. But then came to the combine at just 194 pounds. Very, very bad. He is in the 17th percentile overall with that 1.76 grade. Vertical, not good. Broad, below average. And then to come out in the 40 and run 465 at 194 pounds not looking very explosive at all for a running back this just was just very poor for Kyron Williams already an undersized guy to come out and not really test like an athlete does not bode well tape still good with Kyron Williams he's a really good pass protector maybe the best pass protecting running back in the class but this was not a good day for him at all stock up for receivers there are a lot of them I can't talk about everybody but especially for the fast guys like Tyquan Thornton ran really well but we already knew he was really fast I don't think it does too much for his stock he's a track guy but Christian Watson man uh who knew this guy was going to test four three six official absolutely blazing 40 yard dash for a receiver that stands over six foot four inches tall nearly 210 pounds really really big but the vertical crazy the broad jump insane 99th percentile and then to just run as fast as he did man Christian Watson, with that size and speed, he's someone that could go very, very early in the draft. You can see his RAS comps are some freak athletes as well, even though these receivers haven't exactly worked out. Another FCS guy is Isaiah Weston from Northern Iowa. He doesn't have the quite, uh, quite the same hype to go in near the first round like Christian Watson does, but he's a gunner probably down the stretch. He's a special teamer immediately for you, standing over six foot three, 214 pounds very strong 20 reps at 225 is great for a receiver especially with longer arms vertical broad very very good and then to run 442 as well at that size a team's going to find a way to use this guy it might not be as a true receiver but as a gunner a special teamer he's going to offer you a lot of value with that size and speed now calvin austin needed to come out and have a very very good day to boost his stock he's had a good off season already was uncoverable at the senior bowl that whole week of practices it was an uphill battle height weight he's very very short very small 5'7 170 pounds but the testing was out of this world his broad jump was like twice his height which is insanity 99th percentile keep in mind he's five foot seven so this number is even more insane the vertical nearly 40 inches and then to go out and run four three two there are some guys that are slowing down the footage say it was a 4-1-2 it wasn't the, the clock started late there were clock issues at the combine all week but official 4-3-2 is a really really good time and the reason he's not 2-2 at well is because he has skills other than just being fast despite being short 
This guy can move. He's very, very quick. This is a really good shuttle time at 4.07. And the route running's there. The hands are there from Calvin Austin. He's more than just a little guy. This could be a really, really talented player. I'm not sure he ever becomes a star, but he tested it very, very well. And the route running's there. The makeup in the right offense, Calvin Austin could do a lot of good things for you. And somewhat along the same lines, I think Sky Moore really did a lot for his uh, stock as well. Now, this is a guy on tape who looks quicker than fast, which is surprising that his agilities were so, so bad, but he ran very, very well. 4-4-1, 40, looked very good in the drills, of course, as well. And despite being a little bit undersized, his hands are not, let me show you. So even though he's just like 5'10", his hands are over 10 inches from thumb to pinky. And I have big hands. I'm about six foot three for perspective. Mine are just about 10 inches. His are bigger than mine at 10 and one fourth. If we check out Calvin Austin, he's got decent hands for someone as small as he is at over nine inches. But check out some of these other guys. Justin Ross. He has bigger hands than six foot four Justin Ross. Alec Pierce, bigger hands than him. And he's six foot three. George Pickens, another guy, six three way bigger hands than George Pickens. Sky Moore has massive mitts. The size really shouldn't be a concern with the little hands like a guy like Rondell Moore. Like he's got very, very big hands. Showed off at the combine, looked really good in the drills and the athletic testing pretty good as well. And I guess we'll use that to segue into Alec Pierce. He had a great, great day. Looks fast on tape, backed it up at the combine. Agilities aren't great, but he's a bigger dude. This is a big receiver. And for him to come out and run 4-4-1, very, very good. Vertical, elite broad jump in that same range as well height weight was there alec pierce stock up and i also thought the same for khalil shakir this was the guy who had questions about his long speed but for him to come out and run 443 very very good looked like a quicker than fast guy agilities aren't great but that long speed you know looking better than expected thought garrett wilson looked pretty good as well he looked exceptional in the drills just looking fluid uh, and very very polished safe receiver in this draft i would say ran out and and did four three eight uh, very impressive i thought he would have been closer to four or five he was not expected to run faster than chris olave he still did 0.01 seconds faster but still faster four three eight is incredible very very explosive and looked great in all the drills i think with the the vert and broad you thought they'd be a little bit better you know he plays he's close to six foot Weight was a little bit less than what you'd expect it to be, and he didn't really do much of the uh, agility testing, but he looked very good in the drills and ran very fast. The first loser I thought was Traylon Burks, and let me explain. The 4.5540 is not bad for him at all. It really isn't. He plays much faster than that, but the way I think he was a loser at the combine was it's a very close battle to be receiver one. And if Traylon Burks came out and tested insanely freaky as people thought he had the potential to do this is someone that could have really moved himself ahead in the rankings and kind of solidified that receiver one spot however i think it's still up in the air he didn't test insanely tested pretty well the agility was not good that's a horrible three cone the vertical wasn't very good as well a little bit weird ran okay if he tore up the combine he would have been you know really in that receiver one conversation still is you know the combine drills and testing is not everything believe me it, interviews medicals matter the most from the combine and the game to uh film is paramount to all but yeah he just didn't break the combine i think if he was unbelievable certainly would have been stock up but i think the other guys have kind of ascended past him and he just didn't do anything crazy and i think david bell is a stock down guy as well uh, i keep getting message about david bell the entire year we knew he was not going to test well, having he been particularly high on him, but he's a good player on tape. We knew he was not going to test well. So how much does this do for a stock? Definitely doesn't do anything good for him. He probably should have opted out unless he was going to test really, really well, but he tested very, very poorly. I mean, not fast, not quick, not explosive, not anything. Very, very bad stuff from the combine from David Bell. Not entirely a surprise, but it was just a very bad day in terms of athletic testing. Looked pretty good in the drills you'd expect him to. He's a good receiver. He's got good hands, but the athletic testing was abysmal. For the tight end risers, we're going to start with Chica Conquo from Maryland. Now, this is a really good score, 798 at tight end. This is a 10 
a perfect 10 at fullback and that's kind of what he's built a little bit more for over 6 2 240 pounds ran really really well 4 5 2 great vert as well think of kind of a delaney walker type tight end and that's obviously a very 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 good player but in that hybrid you know fullback tight end h-back role like maybe what a john o. smith can offer you that's the type of role that chica Conquo is going to play in the nfl and this is again a 10 at fullback you can't think of him as a true tight end because he's not going to be as tall or as heavy as some of those other guys but he's still a big dude 240 pounds is maybe a little light for a tight end but that's not really what he is like he and a guy like jason witten are not going to play the same role I have to talk about jelani woods from virginia this dude is huge over six foot seven 253 pounds put up 24 reps at 225 and then tested it very well ran 461 incredible time a 1-6 flat for someone that's 6'7", 250 is unreal that is an unbelievable time he's a big dude great athlete backed up by all this and can be a red a red zone threat looked pretty good in the drills as well he's still a little bit newer still a little bit raw as a tight end but this is someone that is a, a long-term project with big upside as a red zone threat testing was crazy there were times in the drills where he could have looked a little bit better but i would say overall very solid performance from jelani woods daniel bellinger from san diego state was also someone that stood out to me he looked very good in the drills i think it kind of went under the radar great athletic performance as well he's got good size and very very fast agile for a guy his size as well at nearly 6'5, 253 pounds great stuff from daniel bellinger and despite not running the 40 we knew Trey McBride wasn't going to be the fastest guy, but he just looked incredible in the drills, whether it was as a receiver, whether it was as a blocker. He just looked natural, looked like a professional out there. And Trey McBride, I think, could be the first tight end off the board. Peyton Hendershot was also someone that impressed me a bit from Indiana. Looked very good in the drills, I think tested well enough. Just kind of looks like a do-it-all tight end that uh, just, I think, separated himself from some of these other tight ends. Like Greg Dulcich is in that conversation as well, but I don't think he did anything at the combine that we didn't already know he could do he was good but uh, a guy like hendershot i think deserves some recognition first stock down is going to be tegan quiriana from oregon state this is a blocking tight end but the problem with that is when you go out and you do the drills and you look so unnatural as a receiver the, i mean he is not going to be a versatile guy for you this is a blocking tight end can he develop as a receiver it's possible but he looked very very bad out there unless he was doing some run blocking so Quiteriano, and we knew this if you watched him at Oregon State already, he's a blocking tight end, but I'm not sure he can do much as a receiver. I don't think Jake Ferguson had the best day either. Uh, he's got decent size to go out and not look very strong. Only 15 reps to the bench. Not a good vertical for the position. Shuttle wasn't too good either. Three cone bit made up for it. So he's got some decent agility. Didn't run all that well. But Ferguson, it's like, is this guy going to be a big tight end at the next level? Can he block? Is he strong enough to? questions uh are up in the air and the last tight end was cole turner from nevada just thought he didn't look that good and of course when you come out and you only rep 17 of the bench not that i can do any keep in mind but for the position tight end i mean you're looking for a guy to be a little bit stronger the vert was absolutely horrible and he just didn't look very good in the drills either so i thought not really a great day from cole turner offensive line we're gonna start with cam jurgen stock up from nebraska probably gonna play center ran 492 very very good time looked very explosive for the position and center we've got that top guy in tyler linderbaum but who's going to compete for that second center spot as a true center jurgens probably not quite in the conversation but definitely turned some heads after this athletic testing sliding over to offensive tackle we knew trevor penning was going to test really well and he did not disappoint sub 49 in the 40 and that's a 10 yard split at 1.71 very very good time very 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 agile and athletic for somebody as big as he is and he is big over 6'7 325 pounds broad jump in the 90th percentile very very good day for trevor penning and i thought charles cross was impressive as well vertical wasn't very good but the broad was shuttle was very good but the three cone wasn't great but we know charles cross can pass block how good is he out in space well the speed very very good i think he plays pretty strong as well despite being a leaner guy overall i think charles cross had a good day as well and Ikki Aquanu was fantastic interviewed very very well and then a 40 at 493 including a very good 10 yard split broad jump he looked explosive looked quick and keep in mind 
This at offensive tackle, a little bit undersized for the position at only six foot four, but the arm length is not going to be a problem. 34 inch arms are very, very long. And this is also a guy that is very, very good at guard. I think he can stick at tackle, but if you run him at offensive guard, that RAS jumps to a 9.47. And it was already looking pretty good. So, Ika Mekwanu, good personality, good guy. And uh, interviews went well. Testing went very, very well. And testing was also unbelievable for Abraham Lucas from Washington State. Big dude, long enough arms at nearly 34 inches. Hand size is pretty big. And then blew it away in the 40, and especially with the agility testing in the, in the shuttle and the three cone. Really good stuff from Abraham Lucas. And this is a guy that could go fairly early on day two because we kind of have our solidified top tackles in place. We know it probably goes Evan Neal, Ike McQuanu, something like that. And then Charles Cross probably is at tackle three pending in that conversation. And then it becomes a little bit weirder. Who's that guy that's going to separate themselves? And Abraham Lucas tested insanely well. Maybe that boosts his stock a little bit. And the last stock up offensive lineman is Zion Johnson. Versatile guy. There's some guys that think he can move to center. He's got long arms though at 34 inches. So the lack of height really shouldn't be a problem. Very, very strong. Great bench. A great bench. And that's hard to do with 34 inch arms. 32 reps. Insane. Great vertical. Great broad jump. Looked amazing in the drills and tested very, very well. And keep in mind, this number is being brought down by his poor composite size grade. Let's move him to center. And it looks even better at a 9.6. Still a little bit undersized in terms of height but with the arm length being 34 inches don't really think it's going to be a problem for stock down we'll talk about Kenyon green when zion johnson was so great and then Kenyon green who has great tape by the way didn't come out and perform the best maybe some questions arise uh didn't run that well didn't look good in the drills uh very low on the bench in comparison to what a guy like uh zion johnson put up Kenyon Green just didn't have a great day. The tape is still good. I'm really not concerned about it, but he definitely didn't boost his stock at the combine. Max Mitchell in that same vein. We talk about Abraham Lucas kind of in that intermediate area, like that day two offensive tackle type guy. Uh, Max Mitchell, I think going the other way from Abraham Lucas, just the testing wasn't too great. And then Evan Neal, I would say, isn't really up or down. He looked like a freak. I mean, he wears 337 better than anybody on the planet. 6'7", he is a huge dude, but maybe he could have separated himself if he came out and showed how much of an athlete he is, and he's a great one. But uh, yeah, I don't think Stock's down because he didn't do anything. We know he's a great athlete, but he didn't really take that chance to really separate himself. And it's a close battle for OT1 between him and Aquanu, so he looked like a freak, but didn't do anything. Didn't work out, no drills. Winners at edge, we'll start with Sam Williams from Ole Miss. Great production in the SEC, put up double digit sacks, and the testing was wild. Just over 6'3", 260. That's a fine weight at defensive end. I know that's 4.92, but if he played outside linebacker, you know, in a 3-4, and he can with that speed, I, as Sam Williams, is, it, this weight's not going to be a problem at 260. That really isn't in the 49th percentile. It's just compared to some of these bigger defensive ends that are like built for the 3-4 when he's not. So we'll look at him at outside linebacker as well in a second for perspective. But that 4-4-6 40-yard dash and a 10-yard split at 1-6-1, very, very good. Anything under like that 1-6-2, 1-6-3 is very, very good. And this is a very, very good day for Sam Williams. At linebacker, that jumps to a 9-9-3. And that is comparing him to some other edge rushers and uh, off-ball guys as well. Keep that in mind. But yeah, great day for Sam Williams. Now, Boye Mafe. Had a very good day for the Minnesota Golden, uh, Golden Gophers as well. Had the 10 unofficial at linebacker. Because we got to keep in mind that this guy is a defensive end. He is a he's an edge rusher. So it's the inverse of what we did with Sam Williams. But he is a defensive end uh, in the same way that Sam Williams is. Ran 4-5-3. Great time. Jumped out the gym. 38-inch vertical. Broad jump was elite as well. And then that 10-yard split was a one 5-7. One of the best times we've seen. That is a really, really good 10-yard split. He explodes off the ball. Still developing as a pass rusher, but tested it very well. And Jermaine Johnson did as well. We're going to run him at defensive end too. But this is one of those guys where, what are the real flaws with him? He's got the arm length. He's got the height. He's got the weight. And this is at linebacker. We're going to run it at defensive end too, where these are going to drop a little bit. But 
explosive 1 6 10 yard split great 40 at under 4 6 great broad jump jermaine johnson's got the production he dominated the senior bowl jermaine johnson could end up going a lot higher than i feel like we're talking about very often jermaine johnson could very easily be a top 10 player in this class and just continues to solidify it every step of the offseason this outlook at defensive end weight obviously brings him down there but every step of the offseason this guy has looked like one of the best players in the draft and i think on draft day his draft position is going to reflect that dominique robinson from miami of ohio is another one of those mid-round guys that i think did a lot for his stock jumped out the gym 41 inch vertical ran really well too this is a big dude nearly 6'5", 253. Just a really good day from Dominique Robinson. And then we have to talk about Amari Barno. Broke the record for 40-yard dashes among defensive linemen. 4 three, six. Amazing time, but he is still a work in progress. But what he did do is show out and say, yeah, you know what? I am an unfinished product, but I've got all the athleticism in the world. So, if you thought, you know what, maybe going to be middle of the pack guy, this is what he looks like at linebacker, 10th percent or 100 percentile for 40, 20 yard split as well. 10 yard split was 1.54, explodes off the ball, broad jump nearly in the 100th percentile as well. Vert was great. Uh, everything is good from Amari Barno from an athletic standpoint, just about developing him as a player. I thought a loser overall from the combine was Majay Sanders, just weighing in at 228 pounds is the smallest defensive end we've seen at the combine since i believe 2003 they may have said he just showed up extremely light apparently that's due to an illness that he was fighting off at the combine lost a lot of weight because he was at the senior bowl over 240 pounds other than that tested pretty well but you'd hope that he would run well at 228 pounds so i'm not really sure what to do with this combine day because he was just so 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 light but the athletic testing, not bad. But you'd expect it to be at sub 230. There's not a defensive end that light in the league. So, weird day. Enigbari was a weird one. Just did not look explosive or athletic at all. But then the vertical was really good. The broad wasn't too bad. It's just running 4.87 with a 1.72 10-yard split when there are already questions about him. Not great. Was very good at the senior bowl. Arm length is crazy long. So this is certainly not, oh man, this is never going to be a good player, but uh, he just did not run nearly as well as you would have hoped for. And then Trey Williams had a horrible day. Now he is going to be in the 94th and 6th percentile for height and weight uh, because we're looking at him as a linebacker, but this is a defensive end. Just running 508 for someone that's 252 pounds is really, really slow. 10 yard split was a 173. That's a little bit better but that's still not good. At defensive end, it looks even worse. He's only 252 pounds. Uh, the vertical and the broad jump were horrible. Just not an athlete. And I, I hate to say that for an NFL draft prospect, but in comparison to some of these other freaks, he tested it about as poorly as you could have. Just not good at defensive end either. Just a, just a bad day. Logan Hall, really, really, really good day. Tested unbelievably well. He is a defensive tackle, but he's also a defensive end. He's an inside-outside guy. This is what it looks like at defensive end. So it's going to be not quite as good. But keep in mind that this guy can do multiple different things. He plays big at D-tackle, so that weight is not going to be a problem. Aaron Donald's like 283, but of course is built way more stocky than the 6'6 Logan Hall. But incredible testing for a defensive tackle. And he's an inside-outside guy. Defensive end, depending on the scheme. 3-4 defensive end. Uh, you know, maybe a 4-3 defensive tackle. I think he can play 3-tech. And this is just really really good athletic testing from logan hall great stuff travis jones was in that same realm six foot four 325 pounds just should not be able to move quite as well as he did unreal three cone for his size explosive in every capacity 9.15 40 or uh in the 91st percentile 492 40 10 yard split wasn't so great for defensive tackles but uh all in all, really good stuff from Travis Jones. Looked great in the drills, was moving fluidly. You just shouldn't be able to move like that at 325 pounds. And he could get some first round buzz as well. Same thing with uh, Thomas Booker here from Stanford. Kind of like that 3-4 defensive end potential as well. Uh, he did not look like 301 pounds, man. He looked like 270. He was cut. He was looking mean and ran 
really, really well. Great agilities too. Thomas Booker stock definitely up. And I thought Perry and Winfrey continues his great offseason. Senior Bowl MVP looked really, really good in the week of practices as well. And then kind of pulled up when he ran that 48940. Great, great athlete. We knew he would be. That 168 10 yard split is unreal. Very, very good day, even if it was ended very shortly. These linebackers are crazy. So many stock up guys. We'll start with Christian Harris. He's kind of gone under the radar, but everyone knows he's been a solid player for Alabama. Plays very fast, and that 4 4 40 uh, is certainly not a surprise. Ran very well, backed it up. Amazing broad as well. Great day from Christian Harris. A lot of these guys had unreal performances. Troy Anderson is no different. The Montana State linebacker. He's played quarterback, been like a hybrid quarterback, running back for Montana State. I think it was Big Sky Freshman of the Year at quarterback and then one Defensive Player of the Year at linebacker. This guy's a crazy athlete and backed it up at the Combine. Great vert, amazing broad jump. And that 4-4-2-40 led all linebackers at the Combine. He's got the size. This dude is a little bit of a project as he's newer to playing linebacker, but you are getting one of the most athletic linebackers in the league whatever team gets him. I think Chad Boom is kind of in that same range as well. Maybe not quite the same athlete that Troy Anderson is. I've kind of grouped these guys both together playing out there in the West, uh, Wyoming, Montana State. Uh, not, not the same conference or anything like that. Wyoming, you're playing against better competition in the Mountain West, but uh, Muma is no joke, dude. Still newer to linebacker uh, and is a little bit raw, but he is one of the better linebackers in the draft. Really good athlete. You talk about an amazing vert and the broad jump, explosiveness off the charts. He's got a nose for the football. Chad Muma could end up being very, very good. And a big part of the Oklahoma State defense this past year was Malcolm Rodriguez. Yes, very poor for a linebacker in terms of size. He's 5'11". 230 is not really small for a linebacker anymore, especially when you're running 4-5-2, 1-6, 10 yard split. Vertical was insane. Very, very good stuff for Malcolm Rodriguez. And just to show you how good of an athlete this dude is, Look at him at strong safety, right? That 854 grade is an 884 at safety. This is a dude that's 230 pounds, but he has the athleticism of a safety. Definitely someone who has to stock up after the senior bowl. Brandon Smith is in that 999 range, 10 unofficial. Uh, yeah, you knew he was gonna test pretty well, and he did. Height, weight for a linebacker. 93rd and 92nd percentile vert and broad jump were amazing everything into the 90th percentile except for his 10 yard split which was still a 1-6 at 250 pounds 4-5 240 yard dash brandon smith can fly great athlete one of the best athletes in the draft period that 10 unofficial ras score or our ra score technically is uh definitely gonna back that up and then leo chanel too I mean, he was listed at 260 playing weight, coming to the combine at 250, still very big. This dude's a big, big, gonna be a Sam linebacker probably. Vert and Broad were insane. And then to go out and run four, five, three in the 40. I mean, this is another freak athlete. Leo Chanel, definitely gonna be a guy that goes well before day three. I think probably round two, maybe round three is gonna be the sweet spot for Leo Chanel. Great player. Backed it up to the combine, testing off the charts. Don't really have much to say for stock down, but Jesse Lucetta was certainly far from impressive. This is looking at him at defensive end. He's a hybrid. He's a defensive end linebacker. So this uh, height weight is going to get a lot better at linebacker, but this RAS is going to look uh, very poor. I expected him to do a lot better than running 4.89. That is not good long speed for a linebacker. He's supposed to be a hybrid guy. 10 yard split wasn't so bad. Vert was great. But man, you're looking at a little bit of a tweener here. And he just ran so poorly in the 40. I mean, look at it at linebacker. Height and weight, of course, get better. Vert, still great. But man, like, it's just crazy how slow he was. Doesn't look that slow. But ran very, very slow. And Devin Lloyd's an interesting one. Uh, didn't run all that well, 4-6-6. He's not really a stock down guy. I just don't think he really did a lot to separate himself as that LB1 with the Kobe Dean not participating in the drills. I think it's still very close with these linebackers. Lloyd is really great on tape, plays a lot faster than 466, but that's not really that bad of a time. There's not really a stock down guy. And if you looked at him at defensive end, for example, uh, these numbers are going to change a whole lot, like especially the uh, height and weight. 
but he's kind of like maybe a strong side defensive end but these numbers look a lot better at defensive end like he's a great athlete uh it's just you know he's an outside linebacker probably is what he's going to end up playing i still think he can stick on the inside though the ras is not the end all be all the 40 is not the end all be all but i'm just trying to show that 466 really not as bad as it looks this is not a stock down or up guy just somebody i wanted to talk about at corner we're not going to talk about caitlin barnes from baylor he ran really really well shout out to the 42340 not a big surprise he's a track background was a texas i believe high school national champion like gold medalist uh in the 100 and 200 meters so it's not shocking to see him run fast but for Tariq Wolin here from UTSA at over six foot four, 205 pounds to jump 42 inches and then ran four two six, one of the top five fastest times in combine history. And he did so at six foot four. Still new to the cornerback position, was a receiver, but the athleticism is off the charts. One of the most athletic freaks we have ever seen in the league. Tariq Wolin is in that conversation. And Zion McCollum from Sam Houston State, dude, this guy needs some props as well. Six foot two, 200 pounds, crazy vert and broad jump. This guy broke the combine. The agility is as, as good as you will ever see from someone that's a corner, especially at six foot two, 9.87 uh, percentile or 98.7 percentile for the 40 at 433. 10 yard split was amazing as well. I mean, this dude is an athletic freak and the agilities are the craziest part at six foot two amazing from zion mccullum definitely going to be an impact player as a gunner right away you'd have to expect cam taylor Britt from nebraska somebody i wanted to talk about as well a little bit undersized in terms of the height but the arm length is good at 31.5 inches like it's not really gonna play too small he's got good tape and he tested well ran four three eight great splits as well cam taylor Britt looked great in the drills too stock definitely up got to talk about sauce gardner i mean the height's crazy nearly six foot three 190 pounds the big question how is this guy gonna run 441 that's pretty fast so yeah sauce gardner i think maybe doing a bit to separate himself as cb1 in the class great stuff from sauce and then the final corner is kair elam another question like how is this dude gonna run he's a long corner but arm length just 30.8 inches don't think it's gonna be a problem with that 439 speed another guy how fast is this guy gonna run uh answer very very fast Great splits too. Elam, man. Really good day. Loser is Jermaine Waller from Virginia Tech. He's got decent tape, but man, you can't be only 180 pounds at six foot and run four, six, eight in the 40. Uh, awful 10 yard split for a corner. I mean, this is worse than Kayvon Thibodeau significantly. And Thibodeau's a great athlete, but Thibodeau's also got, what, 70 pounds on him easily. These are just not good numbers. And I like, when you have a corner running two tenths of a second slower basically than trayvon walker at 90 pounds heavier this was just a horrible day and it's a decent safety class and they show that at the combine these guys tested really really well jt woods as we'll start out with this baylor team brought some track stars some freak athletes woods running four three six great time for his safety 39.5 in the vert broad jump was great looked really good in the drills too jt wood stock up and nick cross too he maybe looked the best of any safety there I had that 4 3 4 40 and again athletic testing is not the end all be all but it certainly helps when the tape's good too and this this safety class we could see a lot of these names go on day two it's a deep class even if there are no real elite guys after kyle hamilton there are some really really talented safeties in this class maybe some impact starters right away uh, Delar and Turner Yell look pretty good for me in the drills. Great 40 for him. 447. Just, I think, had a very good day overall. Of course, the size is not great. 5'10, 197. Maybe this guy could play nickel corner for you. Maybe that's his role. But this is a, a good day for him. Check it out at corner. Might look a little bit better in terms of the height and weight there. But uh, yeah, just thought he had a very good day overall. Looked good in the drills. And I think his stock is probably up. Jaquan Brisker, too. Play is really, really good. Uh, really fast on tape, I should say. High effort guy. But I didn't think he was going to quite run as fast as he did. 4 4 9 40 was a really, really good time for him. We know he already has that, uh, that strength. Great bench. Great broad. I think the agilities would have been good, too, if he had tested 
Uh, but really good day. Didn't think he was going to run quite as fast as he did. And same thing for Marquise Bell. I watched him in the summer. One of these guys that got a lot of hype as a, as a mid-round safety. HBCU, Florida A&M. Shout out Marquise Bell. Had a great day. Ran 4-4-1. I thought he was going to be in the 4-5s for sure. But this is a really, really good time for a big dude. Six foot two, 212 pounds. Uh, shuttle was not great. Not great. But he is definitely fast in a straight line. Had a good day. And then the only loser, I would say, is Kyle Hamilton. But I want to put this into perspective because he still is a freak athlete. That's why you don't just rely on the 40. We have all these different things that really quantify them. And he didn't look like he had ever trained the 40. He was all over the place, not moving in a straight line. That certainly is going to impact the time. But the only reason I would say stock down is he's not like this super freak, unbelievable athlete that we maybe thought. If he ran in the four fours, uh, you know, tested a little bit better in the agilities, man, this guy's a once in a lifetime type athlete. You know, we've kind of used that, uh, you know, generational term a little bit too much these days. But uh, man, the height, weight, crazy, Burton broad jump, explosive. Plays really, really fast, but I would say, yeah, the only reason stock is down is going into the combine, we were viewing this guy like one of the best athletes in the draft, and it's not quite to that level, but still freak athlete, I would say in general. It, was, it sounds contradictory, but yeah, it's just not as much of a freak as we thought, but still a freak overall. These are really good numbers for someone that's as big as he is, 6'4", 220. And that's going to do it for the combine winners and losers. I tried to run through this video as quickly as I could, which still provide uh, providing as much insight as I could talking about these different guys. But yeah, the draft's going to be a lot of fun. Certainly some movement after the combine. Two round mock draft is coming soon, maybe as early as tomorrow. Stay out or stay on the lookout for that. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Back to the house, defensive joke, I'm laughing so loud. Speed burst good.